Hello my friends. Today we're going to paint a um, hummingbird uh, in watercolor and using a um, loose uh, brush using the small, a small brush that a number four and a pointy brush like a regular brush uh, maybe a number 10 with a pointy um, tip. Those three are gonna be my, my brushes and these are my watercolors here, my watercolor palette with different tones and I will talk about the colors uh, while we are painting. Okay, so the first thing I do is start uh, with the sketch in with water and, and the, the brush. So let me get uh, the number four, no, uh, no, a number two here, number two, yeah. And we're gonna start with the head of the bird and then we're gonna do the, the body and the beak. Okay, so let's, let's start it. I'm gonna use a strong color that if we water it down, it's a nice uh, color to use for, for the top of the of the bird and is the opera pink from Daniel Smith so I have my palette here and I'm gonna use just a little bit of paint and more, more water and we're gonna do the the head I'm gonna move my palette here and I'm gonna start here on the on the top so I'm gonna set up the the painting kind of like to this side and the head is gonna be over here so let's let's start the head is just um, a little ellipse a little uh, circle and I'm just adding the color little bits taking into account that I want to leave the the eye the eye section so the eye is going to be like right here in this part and then the beak will go this direction so let's um, let's do this real quick with just the water. I'm going to add um, that shape of the head, just the water and a little bit of paint. And if I don't like, I can always erase and use a paper towel to fix this this problem. Now. Um, as soon as I have that color, I'm going to use a little bit of green because the, the head has a little bit of green feathers right here to just complement this. And we can just start the, the area of, of the body. I'm going to use a lavender color and add this, the shape of the bird. He's standing on um, on a stick, on a little branch. So I'm just setting up the shape here with just the, the water. And what I can do is uh, make the shape of the rest of the body just with a little bit of water and the paint so I know where I'm going. And if I don't like, I can always come and erase this with um, a paper towel and a little bit of water. So instead of using a pencil which is using the water to sketch okay so more or less that's the shape of the bird and we're gonna start adding the tone or the colors so we're gonna work a little bit of wet and wet in here and I'm gonna just add some of that of the tone I'm gonna add some of that uh, opera pink here on the top and the feathers are gonna be this way so I'm just dropping some of that color right here okay now um, I can actually use the green if I want to right now and mix that color right there now the bird we have to take into account that he has a beak coming this direction and the eye is always at the same level so what I can do is just paint the body and then work it because this is wet. I don't want to mix up the colors. So let's add some um, darker purple here underneath. And I'm just leaving the space for the, 
for the I and the B. Right now, I'm just giving you the, the idea of how this uh, head looks like. And using the wet and wet technique, we just move the color very carefully. Okay. So. Okay. And add more, maybe moon glow, which is a darker, darker purple here. Yeah. Give some, give some um, shadows over the wet and wet. And moving this color just a little bit. Okay. Now, uh, with the uh, with the lavender, I'm gonna use that color to give the shape of the bird right now, and just make a suggestion of the feathers on the on the body, just like that. Maybe we can just bleed some of that color from the top, and that will make it more interesting. That's the beauty of watercolor. Okay. And um, I'm going to add a little bit of those fun greens on the wing over here on this side. So this is a spring green, it's very bright. So I can actually mix it with some cascade green. These colors are from Daniel Smith. Um, to give some more uh, movement to the to the feathers, we'll get some more tone here. When it's wet and wet, sometimes um, the colors are a little pale, so you can always come back and add some more tone later if you want. So you let it dry and come back and add some more um, more tone. So let me add some more darker green here. So one of his feathers. And then he he probably has um, this is an imaginative uh, bird. So let's put another feather right here underneath. I'm gonna add some dark tone, a little bit of brown, and a little bit of neutral tint and see um, if that works to give a um, more specific um, shape of uh, that wing. Now I can add a little bit of yellow here on these feathers because um, hummingbirds have a lot of different tone of colors and that's what is fun to paint them because they are so dynamic. I'm gonna add some um, sparking green, green here, and uh, let's see. See how loose I'm, I'm working. I'm just not even grabbing the the brush really close. Just really loose. Just adding the tones and colors and make it happen because the watercolor is doing for you. Mm -hmm. right there we're adding some of that other feather so we're gonna let this dry a little bit and then I will add the details and more tone if I want to so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll come back and add the details in the, the beak, the eye the feet and the and the stick where it's, it's sitting at. Now that I have the, the painting a little bit drier, I can work on the detail of the eye and the beak. So for that, I'm gonna use my needle brush uh, right here. Actually, I'm gonna use this one, this is a little bigger. This one is a number four, it's a little bigger, a little smaller. Let's use the smaller one. I'm gonna get it wet here and 
I'm going to use some of the neutral tint here on my palette and I'm going to draw the eye right here right here really careful so the eye um, always has a little sparkling point and that shows the roundness of the eye so what I do is I leave some of that white uh, from the paper right there as you can see and then the beak is going to be in the same location like right here so really with my nice uh, brush I'm going to just come and add some of that a little line of the beak I don't know how long maybe just that and then I will define it a little bit more I'm just using that as a reference I would just define that, make it with the pointy part of the brush, a little more defined, and then I will come and add a little line on top, really careful, because the, uh, the beak has a little um, shadow underneath. I can always come back and, and fix this later, but this I think that's that's what it is okay now the other thing that I'm going to paint right now is uh, his little foot but um, first I have to paint um, the stick where is he's standing at so um, let's do the stick is his stick is coming this direction like this so let's um, add it a little bit of burn umber and the stick is kind of like going this direction and what I can do is I put that line and then use a little bit of water on my brush and move the paint just a little bit so you don't have the hard line it's more uh, less defined just a little bit of water will take that care of that okay and we let this dry and then come back and, and put the, the foot where he's standing. So right at this moment, what I have is all the colors are pale. So this is the moment that I can actually start adding some more tone, more value to some of the areas. Like I want to increase this, the, the value here. So let's add some more, more that um, moon glow color. I'm gonna add it here right now and take into account a little bit the shape of those um, of the feathers they are a little round round so I'm just gonna add that and then I put that the shape and then I move the color with the water so it mixed up with whatever we have underneath this is this is the transparency of the watercolor working on your favor and here I'm gonna add the same thing some detail with uh, with the little bit of tone of the opera pink Just to add some um, featherly like uh, shape in there so here just like that I'm gonna add some tone and then I wet my brush and I move the paint just a little bit and I will leave some of that underneath shape that I already had from the first layer that we had. Same over here on the top. I'm gonna just add some. I can even come with a smaller brush if I if I want to. Well, I'm just I just have the paint right here, so it's okay. But if you wanna give a little more detail, you know, a smaller brush will help on this right here. And then a little bit of water and move the paint and leave some of that transparency underneath so the same I'm gonna add some more tone here next to the beak so I'm adding the the moon glow just a little bit and let that bleed with the 
with the color that I just added. And look how, how pretty it is. It just gives me a little um, shape in them. Now, I'm going to put a, some tone right here. And maybe we define some of that eye around with some more tone if I want to. I don't want to go overboard. I want to just do the colors uh, bleed together. And if I want, I can even lift some of that tone if I want to leave some of that um, underneath uh, layer of color. Let's put a little bit of dark everything here just to add some some texture to it. So, so far so good. The the color here, the, um, the um, lavender color really makes a big difference. Maybe I add a little bit of the um, neutral tint really diluted to add some uh, shadow in some of these areas to kind of like uh, express the, the feeling of feathers. There's a little bit of shadow here underneath that. Now this area here needs to be a little darker because this feather here is is uh, is underneath this, so there's a shadow part. So I can come with with some um, neutral tint combined with my burnt umber. I'm gonna use this my palette here and water this down so it's not so strong. And I will move that and add some some layer here, some tone, give a little more of transparency and, and more shape to this to this uh, feather right there. Try to uh, not to have hard lines, and uh, the way to do it is just moving the color with the water. Now. Um, I come with some of that uh, green and add some featherly like here. But then if you don't want those hard lines, you just move the color with the water and leave some of that, that color that you had from underneath. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, Taylor Blue just to make this a little more interesting in this area. Let me see. Leave some blanks too. I think the blanks or the, or the white of the paper uh, makes it a little more translucent. So that makes it more fun. And see, I'm just adding really wet that color, but I'm letting the color from underneath to go through. So um, I have a, a, a transparency on this, on this uh, painting. Okay. Let you go. Um, the key is to let the, the colors kind of um, blend with each other and leave the colors uh, uh, look through. So if you put a layer, then you add another color. Don't cover the, the color underneath totally. Let, let those colors uh, go through and just don't cover the whole thing. I'm going to add um, a little bit of yellow new gamboge here just to give some interest to this part of the bird bird's neck and um, I'm just gonna let it go like this okay so I have the I have the stick and then with the pointy brush I'm gonna use uh, this to make the little foot where he's standing he needs to be standing somewhere so um, his uh, his wood is right here. I'm using uh, paints gray and adding some of that that shape. Shape is a little tricky, and it always has this other side of the, and then a little line, and that's it. You don't have to go overboard with the with the um, detail on that. Now I am wa I want to have more texture on this, so I'm gonna add some um, burnt umber on that stick with a dry technique, which means that I put um, less water, more paint, 
on my brush and see if this comes to life. Now, um, I want to have some feathery, like over here, a little more detail. So what I can do is use uh, some of that new lavender, mix it with the neutral tint, and add some of those feathery, like over here with this brush but not, not too much, just a little suggestion so we know that the, the bird has some feathers right there now this, this brush is not cooperating so I'm going to use a bigger brush to move that paint because I don't want just lines so that's the trick, you know try to um, make it look loose more um, more expressive mm -hmm. the, the, the color right there is a little too strong so I just move it a little bit and maybe I'm gonna add some more tone here in this area because I think it needs a little darkness other than that I think the only thing that we need to do is uh, is put some some more definition here on his beak, and I'm gonna use my pointy brush right here and um, add some tone, some darker tone here. So so it makes it a little more uh, realistic. And then the eye, we can actually define some of the eye with a little line underneath just to make it look more realistic. Adding some color here. And maybe move it if I don't want this to be so strong. And we're not seeing his other um, his other foot. He's just so I think this over here is needs to be a little more defined. Put in a little more um, lavender color. Maybe not. Maybe I don't like that. And you can always um, use the paper towel if you don't like the excessive color. So I'm gonna use that right now because this color came out a little too strong and I can actually um, define this a little better just with a little more of a neutral thing. Let's do um, a little layer here that imitates the shape of the of the feather. and some here because it's missing a little part in the back but this is what I'm seeing I really like trying to give that idea the last thing that you can do to finish up is to add some some tone in the back maybe some sparkle um, if you want uh, you can add a little leaf over here or something that that represents the where he's standing, so maybe let's add some leaf, uh, something from the tree. I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow and a little bit of um, new gamboge. So he's not standing all by himself in that place. And then what you can do also is, is make a um, make a background with your mop brush and use maybe um, a little tone of like maybe some blue or something like that. Really light, really light. See, like right there, it's not light, but I can move the color real quick and make this part of the background tone. 
being careful around the bed trying to fill out the space and the painting is not about the background the painting is about the bird so you just let this blend in the background with no more um, no more um, detail and uh, that's it you know I can always uh, come back and add some more tone if I want to but don't overdo it because the key is to make the eye go to the to the bird not the background really light really light some more tone here and and I think we are done the last thing that you can do is sign it and let it dry sign it and take care of the of the board thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed